SCR, Selective Catalytic Reduction. What is this? Well, it's a system that we find gives superior fuel economy compared to other solutions. It improves your engine performance. There's less EGR needed, so you can back off on the EGR and the engine comes back alive in some respects. Uh, it creates less heat rejection. It gives you greater power density. We're going to have a 500 horsepower rating for EPA 10, as you might know. It'll be uh, rated with 1,750 pounds-feet of torque. And you get higher efficiency, and that's all that really amounts is fuel economy. Uh, that's what we're trying to do. Very little maintenance. It's a high volume system in other markets. This is important because while we were the first with cooled EGR, we were the first with an actively regenerated DPF, we won't be the first market to use selective catalytic reduction. It's also used in a number of other industries today, like in some uh, uh, ships and freighters and just a lot of different things. The, the uh, technique for reducing NOx has been well known. Here's the reaction. You take a com ammonia or a compound that turns to ammonia, which is NH3, and you combine that with the NO, the NOx that's in the engine, and it creates N2 and H2O, nitrogen and water vapor. It turns the NOx into nitrogen, which is 80% of the air that we breathe, it, it, and, and it eliminates all the pollution, bang, there's nothing left over. It's an elegant reaction, it works pretty good. Yes, it does add some complication. And we'll go over them. There's a, a DEF, a diesel exhaust fluid tank, uh, that'll be on the driver's side. And that's heated because uh, we want to keep it from freezing. We'll have a couple different sizes, as you might know. Uh, there's a pump and there's a filter. Uh, there, uh, the lines that go to the injector have to be heated. There is an injector mounted to today's uh, DPF. And then there's an SCR catalyst that you'll find either meant mounted uh, behind today's diesel particulate filter or perhaps behind the cab. This is the uh, module for the DEF system, and it's pretty rugged, as you can see. It's air-cooled. It'll, it'll mount uh, to the DEF tank in a pretty controlled space, and that way it'll be uh, stable and have a long life and get good fuel economy. This is the pump that pumps the DEF to the injector. It's based on the same pump that we use in Europe, although this is 12 volts, and in Europe it's 24 volts, but the functionality, the design, it's the same, and with those economies of scale, we get a long life and good reliability and good fuel mileage. And then this is the injector. Small for its size, but it does a lot. What it does is it pumps in, uh, uh, think about a water pistol, about that much urea into the engine, uh, just a tiny squirt now and then to keep the, the uh, solution soaked inside, and that way you get maximum conversion and best knocks. Here you see uh, one of our trucks that showing the diesel particulate filter, the DEF injectors here, and this is our SCR catalyst itself. I want to share with you that the, uh, the tube that the ure urea decomposes into ammonia inside goes from here the whole way through this catalyst to here before it does anything. So the reason for this design is to give us quite a long decomposition tube, which is key to our design, because we get a very good conversion efficiency of the uh, diesel exhaust fluid into the ammonia. It has to all be converted, and we make sure that it is through this process. Um, it retains the serviceability, which I know some of you are responsible for, of our diesel particulate filter, which means you can take it apart uh, using a really complicated tool as a floor jack. Uh, when the ash needs to be cleaned out of that, which is occasionally, but let's say every 250,000 miles. Um, and by separating these two units from each other, uh, if there's collision damage, for example, you don't have to replace the entire thing at once, just the injured part. So there's a lot of advantages to this design. Close up of, of the features, but I think many of you may have already seen that already. The diesel exhaust fluid tank is on the driver's side. It'll always have this blue cap. Um, there's a 19 millimeter throat, and that's to use a 19 millimeter nozzle, so it makes, makes it impossible to put a diesel fuel nozzle into the diesel exhaust fluid tank. Um, as far as an indicator, we're using a real gauge, and it's a complement to the diesel fuel gauge that's on this side, so in other words, the driver will see too. There are some designs that we've seen that are using an LED in the, in the fuel gauge that has four segments, so that I guess is a full 
and two-thirds and one-third and empty. And rather than seeing just something jump in those chunks, uh, I've driven this truck and this, this gauge will move extremely slowly, obviously because it takes a while to um, consume that amount of diesel exhaust fluid. And the driver will always have an, a very accurate feeling of exactly how much is in there and how far that he can go. We'll cover that in some other slides in a second. This is the part I like the best, actually. This is the uh, um, is a molded function device that acts as the intake for the diesel exhaust fluid that comes through this filter here. This is the serviceable piece, and then that's drawn out, you know, through the top. And the rest of this uh, stainless steel tubing is primarily temperature control. The coolant would come down, up and down, and then it goes out and then back, and then up, down, and up and out. And then there's a little loop here where it can bypass and that's used in the thermostatic control of the device to modulate the coolant to keep the temperature of the DEF at a steady 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Then there's a couple more things. Uh, all those wires uh, come in here and there's four uh, prongs in this wire. It's, it's a nice tight harness and, and it's all the electrical wiring we have. It can be groomed and clipped uh, quite easily. And then we have the float that comes up and down and this is what monitors the diesel exhaust fluid level. And there's a sensor inside here that communicates with this, this harness. And uh, it all works together as one piece. The best thing we can say about this is that it is not, this is not a prototype part. This is a production part. And Volvo Group has already sold and delivered over 150,000 of these. It works. We know what we're doing you won't have a problem with these systems because it's already a production piece. Let me pass this around and you can take a good look at that. Here's the uh, statement again about why we chose SCR. Because with using the urea, we're simply nuking the NOx, to corner phrase. Because we're actually allowed to make more NOx coming out of the engine, which we're using for other things, and then we nuke it in the after treatment. So we can, we can make sure by measuring it that there's, there's no NOx coming outside of the engine. So we can reduce the EGR, we can adjust the engine timing and the pressure ratios the way they used to be, and still have a genuine near zero emission compliant engine. Well, how much does our engine change? Here's some good news for our customers because Volvo will have the only engine that experiences only minor changes between our 2007 engine in January 2007 and today. Think about it. The uh, Series 60 has been withdrawn from production. The MBE 4000 is no longer available. The Cummins ISM is no longer available. Um, the other engines that are available are only months old and, and are pretty new. And we have an engine that has uh, quite a lot of history. Oh, by the way, the D13 is the most uh, popular engine in the world, selling well over 100,000 as a single displacement engine. And uh, that's something to say for itself. Now, let's take a look at the comparison between exhaust gas recirculation in terms of massive EGR and the system that we're going to use that uses a less amount of EGR plus some SCR. Power density, with power density, uh, with MEGR, it's going to drop because that's a function of thermodynamics. There's just not that much air in there, so you can't get as much power. Uh, without exceeding your peak cylinder pressure limits. And with us, we get a higher power density, meaning we are increasing our horsepower in some ratings. Uh, our heat rejection is less. We're not going to change the cooling system, but we, even though we have no problems today, we'll certainly have no problems in the future. And best of all, our fuel efficiency will be greater. So those three things are uh, the comparison between EGR and SCR. Now let's talk about urea. Urea's causing a lot of consternation right now because it's unknown. We're using a solution of urea, meaning it's a mixture of urea and water, pure water, and as I said, it turns into ammonia and we talked about this reaction. I have some here and, and we'll pass it around. Um, urea is a compound that's synthesized. It's, it's made in plants. It's made out of natural gas and water. Our diesel exhaust fluid is made of natural gas and water. So you can see that it's not going to be very difficult to make.